Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to part 10, 10, I know, 10 of our build of the Games Workshop Space Wolves Storm Wolf Assault Craft Brackets, a Stormfang variant brackets. I nearly forgot what it was called, brackets. <sighs> Welcome to part 10, which is about the diorama. Now, I do have to apologise, part 11 was supposed to be about the diorama. Part 10 was supposed to be about the spes bikes yeah the yeah. i had a nightmare a number of reasons one this isn't a very good kit this little space bike it's very old these kits are like 20 years old now it's not very much fun to paint it's just everything's really soft it's just uh, seam lines the details are a bit shonky yeah and and to make it worse and this is why i have to apologize i did film the painting unfortunately a number of things meant that by the end of it I had nothing useful to give you an episode I had problems with the camera I had problems with the video quality I had problems with the lighting I had problems with the sound I had problems with corrupt files I had problems with I appeared to be painting it with half a potato or my elbow or my face I just I don't know what happened all the problems I had the technical problems combined with the fact that I suddenly forgot how to painting which just just meant this came out a bit gash so it's not my most proudest work ever i'm not really happy with it but it'll do there's not much more i can do to recover it now so it will be fine in the context of the diorama but yeah i mean i'm really happy with the bloke but the bike so yeah my apologies i didn't i wasn't able to create a usable episode so we're skipping straight ahead to the diorama episode now we have here a diorama base. I ordered myself a big base from uh, I like big base and I cannot lie. Some mother brother. I'm not going to do that again. I got myself a base of significant size from the Games Workshop because uh, the flyer base that comes with it is far too small for anything interesting. So I've got this. I have glued my flight stand to it and I've chopped the flight stand down to make it the same length as the one that I had that was painting on. That was the black one that I was using to paint with. So I've just cut that off with a with a hacksaw and filed it down. Now, I've learned some things. This is attached with super glue. There's no tabs for this, it just plonks on and you glue it in with super glue. Now, as you all know, super glue fogs up plastic. It fogs up plastic like nobody's business. Uh, I actually went a bit crazy and put too much glue on and it fogged the plastic all the way up. And I'm like, oh, I haven't got another flight stand. I found a solution if you get fogging on your clear parts all you need to do is quite simply get a cotton bud uh, and some isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol or 99% rubbing alcohol if you're one of our colonial cousins uh, and just you know once it starts to look like it's dry just wipe it off rub it off with the cotton bud and it will get rid of it I probably need to get rid of this bit down here as well because I didn't go quite far enough but I might pile something up around here to cover that a bit so we'll see how it goes so yes yeah, so if you get fog from your ca glow on your clear parts just wipe it off with a cotton bud uh, and some isopropyl alcohol jobs a good one i have drilled two holes in the base yeah and yeah uh, and i've just loosely put in some cocktail sticks for now to keep the holes open this is where the bike and the dude are going to go so what we need to do is make a funky diorama now we're going to keep this fairly simple i had all kinds of ideas and thoughts and i was going to do a big diorama on a wooden base with a picture frame but I need to ship this when somebody buys it so I, I can't afford to be building some big complex diorama because it's just not practical for me to ship that without it becoming destroyed so I decided to go for the base oh, one other thing I've learned as well when you glue stuff to the base it kind of warps it so it's got a bit of a it was flat before now it's got a bit of a wobble to it it seems to be when you glue things it it's, I don't know it's really weird anyway I'm not really fussed it's not that bad uh, so yes so we're going to keep it simple we're going to have a few little items on the base we're going to do some mud and we're going to do some snow space wolves it's got to be snow so we're going to do some snow so i'm not going to show you all the things i'm going to use now we'll just go through it as we go through it so the first thing we're going to do is glue some chisel to this base 
Now I have a couple of pieces. Uh, I got myself some sort of like scenery pieces from Games Workshop from my local Warhammer store. Got a couple of tiles. I've got a sunken crate. I've got this little beauty, which is a sort of half sunken barrel. I like that. And I've got some little bracken things, which um, are weird. They're really squishy and flexible and weird. So we're going to glue these on. I don't really have a plan. But I'm just going to make it up as I go along. So this is happy, messy, fun times. This is not serious model making times. This is happy, messy, fun times. So what I'm thinking is maybe put that there. Somehow have this somewhere. Like that maybe. Maybe not quite so straight. We'll have a plonk there. That might cover up the little nipple in the middle. Nipple. Put a barrel next to it. And we'll have just brackeny things lying around hither and yon and we'll see how that comes out so how we can do these just glue them on with super glue it's dead simple they're not hard uh, now i don't have to worry about the super glue fogging here because it's um not near the clear piece so all we're gonna do is get ourselves some super glue i've got some of this games workshop super glue but this was open and i couldn't be bothered putting the lid on the super other super glue uh, you could use pva glue for this if you want but i'm just going to use super glue because it's faster and it might come out the tube if i can do it on camera this is thick super glue so it's not going to splooge everywhere I want to do that kind of there kind of there there we go perfect and we'll do the other one I think you can figure out how this process works let's make some super glue on it Try not to stick it to myself, which would be really embarrassing, but highly expected. Now, I'm not worried about making a mess with super glue and stuff down here, because we are going to put stuff on this board. It's going to have textures and things on it. So it doesn't matter if you make a mess at this point. Just don't glue stuff to your entire face or anything like that. Uh, and then I'll go around and I'll get all these parts glued in. And then I've not decided if I'm going to put the little shrubs and things on yet because we've got snow and stuff to do on camera. Snow and stuff to come yet, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. So we'll figure it out. I might glue them on anyway just to get them glued on. So I'll go and get all these glued on. Uh, I'll give it half an hour to fully cure, and then we'll do the next step. So I'm back in a moment. Okay, so you can see all the stuff is now glued on. I decided to glue on those little shrubby bracken things anyway. So looking quite cool. Now, what's next? Well, we need to now protect this clear part, which I've just cleaned up a little bit with some more IPA because it had fogged up a little bit more. Uh, we need to protect this from all the painting and masking. Uh, painting and masking, painting and spraying. So this isn't a hard thing. This is just literally a case of get some tape on it, cover it up as best you can. Okay, so that's everything now masked off. The the, uh, the flying stalk or stem is now masked, so that's not going to get any primer on it. We'll need to unmask it when we do everything else, so we'll get this primered, painted, then we'll take the masking off, we'll do all the snow and stuff, and then what we'll need to do is when we do a final matte varnish, if we do one, we'll need to somehow mask this off so we don't get matte varnish all over it. What's next? Next up, we just need to add a little bit more life to this, and I'm going to add some gravel. I've got a big pot of gravel that I have no idea where I got it from. Oh. Horticultural grit from somewhere, probably my local garden centre. And all I'm going to do here, these are like blocks of stone. They look a bit weird just of blocks of stone on their own if I do it on camera. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of this in, just around here. Just a little bit, just to give some extra little stones and rocks. Put some out here. So at least it looks like there's some sort of reason for those blocks to be there. They're not just randomly placed. Uh, and I do have some other coarser grits that I can sprinkle on top, but I think I'll be fine just as that, because I'm going to put mud on here anyway. So what I've done, I've put those on there. Now, what I need to do next is get them in place. So I've got some PVA glue mixed with water. Uh, and I'm just going to brush this on quite handily and quite heavily, just everywhere. And I'm going to do it on camera, just everywhere to lock these in place. Now it might take a while for me to do this. So I'll crack on. And the downside of PVA glue is it does take a lifetime to actually set. So I don't know how long this will take to dry. 
but we shall find out. This is the boring bit. Okay, so that's everything glued down. I've gone ahead and given it a blast of primer. I was going to use the Chaos Black Rattle Cam, uh, but it's minging outside, raining, so I had to use the UMP thinner through my thinner primer, even get my words out. UMP primer through my airbrush instead, so it's giving it a nice black coat. Now I do have to confess, these little rocks, yeah, the the PVA uh, PVA glue. It's also known as if you if you're one of our colonial cousins. It's known as Elmer's glue in the States. Um, PVA glue, craft glue, hobby glue, Elmer's glue. Uh, it takes forever to dry and I got bored. So what I did was I took all the stones off, wiped all the PVA off after about an hour uh, and I just super glued them on instead because I got bored. So they're just super glued on. They're not coming off anytime soon, but you can use PVA. It just takes a long time to dry and I was getting bored. So everything's down. Uh, I have had to go back a couple of times and work some misty fog off this clear part uh, so i'm guessing there's glue still doing things down there uh, so if you're doing this and you've used the ipa the isopropyl alcohol to get the fog off just keep going back every now and then and double checking it so it might keep coming back eventually it'll stop and hopefully it'll just stay clear but we're going to build up stuff above this hopefully i think anyway so what's first so what we need to do now we've got everything primed so we start need to get this painted uh, before we start putting the textures and stuff on now the thing with this is we are going to cover it in mud and snow so you don't need to be too careful painting this it doesn't need to be your best paint job ever uh, and given the fact that i made a complete arse of that bike that motorbike that's a good thing so uh, you don't need to be super neat or super careful with this it is going to get covered with snow but we need to make sure there's some color there so it doesn't just look black so what i'm going to do first i'm going to paint this stone thing here so we're going to start off with some mechanicus standard gray mechanicus standard gray and we're just going to very quickly get a coat of that on got some on my wet palette uh, i'm not worried if i get it on the actual base that doesn't matter because that's going to get covered in mud and i'm not worried if i get it on the uh plants because they're going to get painted up. So I need to go over all this rock. I also need to go over the stones as well because I need to make sure they're the same color as the rock because they're supposed to be like bits of the rock that's fallen off. So it's probably a good idea if I make them look the same color. Okay, and with more than one but less than three reasonably not particular voluminous coats of gray on there, uh, the next base colour we're going to add is Balthazar Gold. I'm making this up as I go along. What we're going to do is get all the base colours down first before we do any washes or anything like that. So Balthazar Gold is the next one. Uh, and this is purely for the edging on this stonework. I'm just getting it off my palette now. It's purely for this edging on the stonework. Now I, could, I don't want to do it blingy gold because this is supposed to be like a ruin. So I don't want it to look bright gold. I want it to look a bit old. So I'm just going to work my way around now, uh, get all this covered in the Balthazar gold. As you can see, it may require more than one coat. Probably not three, but more than one. Okay, so that's the Balthazar gold on there, looking pretty spanky. Again, I've not been neat around the edges, but I don't care because we're going to be doing lots of washes and textures on there anyway. Uh, next up, we're going to go in with some Lead Beltra, and this is for this case. Now, I'm actually going to paint this case a normal colour, but I want to make the framing around it, this kind of, sort of bars, silver, and it's easier if I paint it all silver and then paint the colour in than if I just do it the colour first. Just save myself some time. So all I'm going to do get myself some lead belcher on this case I'm not going to cover the whole thing I just just around these bars and the edges okay so with the iron breaker on there next we're going to go in with some steel legion drab for the panels now I went down the sides with the iron breaker because there's no clear ridge for the metal sort of frame down the side so i just hedge my bets and painted the whole thing silver on the side hopefully that will be fine so all i'm going to do is get myself some steel legion drab it's on my wet palette as always get a little bit on my brush 
and we're just going to very carefully paint the insides of these things now. Uh, if I do mess up, don't worry, it's going to take more than one coat, obviously. If I do mess up and get any paint over the iron breaker, I can just go and tidy it up after I've done this bit. So that's not the end of the world. Again, don't worry too much about being neat because you are going to cover all this with lots of snow and mud goodness. Goodness. And with that painted onto the next step, uh, we're going to do something on the barrel. Uh, now the barrel is going to be red and white, uh, but the white's going to struggle to get coverage on this black primer coat. So what I'm going to do first is coat it in some Zandri dust. So as always, I've got some on my wet palette. So if you ever are painting a light colour like white or yellow, it's always best to base with a light colour first, a neutral. This isn't that neutral, but I'm going to have it look slightly rusted and worn anyway. Okay, with the Zandri dust, Zandri dust, dry. Uh, it's time to go in with some ceramite white. Yes, yeah, nice thick base coat. So we're just going to get this on the brush, and we're simply going to go over that that we've just painted. Okay, the white's now dried. It's a little bit translucent. But I can live with that, so we're going to weather this anyway, so I'm not too fussed if it's not a brilliant, brilliant white colour. So next we're going to do the red for the barrel, and for that we are going to use corn red. Corn red. I've not used corn red before. I usually use a uh, Mephiston red, but I thought this would be a nice different variation from anything else that's red in the model. So I've got some on wet palette, and all we're going to do is brush on these end parts. Ooh, uh, matron. Okay, so that's the base colours on the barrels. You can see I've also gone ahead and painted the aquila in the middle there. Uh, I didn't show on camera because it's too small and fiddly. Now, the thing with this scenery set is the details are really, really soft. I was quite surprised when I opened the pack up. The details are not normal Games Workshop standard crisp detail. So it's a bit rough around the edges and it's not exactly brilliantly painted, but it doesn't actually matter again because we're going to be covering a lot of this up. You're probably not even going to see most of that anyway. So it's just really to have a colour in there. It doesn't matter if it's rough around the edges, but you would have a heck of a time actually painting that neatly anyway because it's really bad moulding. I'm guessing these scenery kits are really old because they're just horrible. They're horrible in terms of soft detail. Anyway, what's next? Next we need to start doing some dry brushing uh, on the rocks. And for this we're going to use a Fedrician Grey. Uh, and all we're going to do is, as the, name, as the name suggests, dry brushing. Okay, dry brush. I'm going to get some on my on my brush. Not a lot, just a little tiny bit. Not got much paint left in there actually. Going to get most of that off on my tissue. Note yet how when I've been dry brushing, I've never yet said work it in amongst the bristles. I don't intend on saying that. And all we're going to do is literally dry brush over the rocks and the stone very lightly because we don't want it to be too major. And we are going to have to redo this again later anyway. This is just to get a bit of a highlight for now. So if it's a bit more obvious than normal, because we've got shades to come, if it's a bit more obvious than normal, then that's fine. So I'm taking it mostly off on the stones first, being careful to avoid the other parts. And it just brightens them up. And then on the grey stone here, I'm just going to use a circular motion just to lightly try and touch the surface detail. Now, because the detail on these pieces is soft, it's not really going to pick much up. I'm going to try and avoid going on the gold as well. I so say we will have to redo this again later, so it doesn't matter how much you do now. This is just to get things going and get a bit of variation. Okay, so that's the stone all dry brushed. Next up, we're going to do some dry brushing on the brown panels here. And for that, we're going to use Zandri Dust. Uh, this won't be such a massive contrast uh, as the other colour was to the stone, but it'll still gives a nice bit of contrast and again I'm going to be dry brushing this I'm just getting it off on my tissue now which is unfortunately off camera sorry about that uh, and all we're going to do is work it into these little areas really kind of focus in the middle and be as gentle as possible because I want it to be subtle not major massive again it's mostly going to be hidden 
but it's just to give some variation and if I do go over any of the lead belcher I can just touch that in again when I've done but this will just give some shading in the middles okay with that dry brushing done on the trunk drun 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 let's start that again and with that dry brushing done on the trunk I still need to go back and touch up the lead belcher uh, but next we want to do some dry brushing on this barrel and for this we're going to use Evil Sun's Scarlet. Now like I said before, we probably have to redo all this dry brushing anyway because a lot of this might get hidden with shades but it just adds, you don't have to do this I'm just getting the paint off on the tissue by the way um, you don't have to do this, it just adds a little depth so that when you do put a shade on, it's there and then when you do another dry brush later my god it's taken forever to get the paint off this brush I only put a tiny bit on and it's just bright red and it's got an infinite amount of paint on it. I only want a tiny bit. Uh, it just it just you might be a little bit visible later on and you'll just see a little bit of a, a variation, so that's cool. So with this again, we're just gonna dry brush it over. Try not to get it on the on the white bit, obviously. Okay, and with that done, it's on to the next step. Now, this is about as complex as I want the paint job to get. There is more to do, but I'm not going to go into any more detail like putting chips on the barrel and stuff like that. Again, because we're covering most of this up, it doesn't need to be the best paint job in the world. It doesn't need to be that detailed. If this wasn't being covered up with snow and mud, then I probably would do things like chipping in more detail on the barrel, brush it more carefully, and things like that. But we are going to do a bit more dry brushing and washes and stuff, but in terms of the actual colours, it's probably about as complicated as I need to get. So what's next? Well, next we need to get messy. Yes, and for this we're going to use Sterland Mud. So this is a very, I'm just going to give it a shake. This is a very, very thick paint, which just looks like, as you can see, yeah, looks like poop. Just looks like mud. Now, there's no real special technique to this. Uh, these are the easiest paints to put on. I've got two things. I've got an old brush that I'm not too fussed about. And I've got my one of my sculpting tools with the spatulia end and a pointy McStabby end, and yes, I did stab myself yesterday with it, of course I did. Uh, and all we're gonna do is basically cover all the base. Uh, now I'm gonna basically use that sculpting tool to work it in between these stones, uh, and I've probably got a smaller brush somewhere in case I need to get into some of the really tiny spaces. I'm gonna work it around all these bits and work it up to the base and just touching the base, because I'm gonna put snow on top of there. Now I did say that was all the paint we're gonna do, but we've still got to paint the plants, but I'm not painting them now because I don't want to paint them and then get them all covered in mud. So I'm gonna get the mud down first, then we'll paint the plants and do the final touches and washes and stuff, and then we can do the snow. So still mud, dead easy, you don't need to put on a pallet, just get it straight from the jar. Get a big dod, slightly out of focus, on the brush. You can go for quite a lot here because we're gonna spread it everywhere. And then all we need to do is start basically slapping it on. Slap it on. Now, it's not the thickest paint in the world, but it's not super thin either. So you can get it on there quite thick and build it up. You get this wonderful sort of lumpy texture, but you can build it up as well. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try not to get any around the edge. I'm gonna put loads of mud here, because I want to put some tracks here or something like that. Uh, and the rest of it will just leave quite flat. So I'll probably do a couple of layers here. I'll do a layer and let it dry and add more on top just to build up and around the stand as well to try and build that up. So this is just the next step basically is going in and adding a whole load of ucky yucky nyach mud all over the base. Not around the red at the rim. I want to keep that black if I can. So I'll just crack on with this. This is great fun. Great fun. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so you can see it's all covered in glorious mud. Glorious mud. I wasn't careful. I've been quite messy. I've covered up a lot of stones. Again, we're not going to see a lot of this anyway, so I'm not too fussed. Did go up the side of the stand a little bit there, you can see, but again, not really fussed. So what's next? Well, while this is drying, it's not fully dry yet, I need to make some tire tracks from the motorbike. Maybe not from this motorbike that's on the diorama, but to suggest other motorbikes. What we're going to do, got a, a wheel on a, to on a toothbrush. No, not a toothbrush. A paintbrush on a paintbrush on the other end of the paintbrush. All I'm going to do is quite simply make tire tracks like this. Ready? Now it might not work, but it'll just give some kind of treaded tire track appearance to this part of it. 
It's not picking up the tread, really. Let's just get some of that off. It's not really picking up the tread at all, but it doesn't matter. It's just giving some appearance of tracks going hither and yon, and that's that's really all I'm looking for. That kind of you can't really see it unless you get in the right light. That kind of track appearance, just so you can see something that sets it aside from the rest of the mud. So that'll do that. I can now throw this wheel away, uh, and I need to wait for this to dry now. I don't got any idea how long this actually takes to dry. Could be half an hour. Could be three hours. I could hair dryer it, but I don't know what effect that would have on it. I don't want it to turn into a crackle mud. So I'll just leave it to air dry. Mm, back in a moment. This could take a while. Back in maybe more than a moment. And that was that was like eight thin coats. <laughs> eight thin coats. Not not the other number. Eight. Cut. Okay, well it's been about an hour and the mud is still drying in some of the thicker areas, so I may as well crack on. Uh, it's time to paint the greens, so the little planty things, the shrubs or the bracken or whatever it is. So for this we're going to start off with a coat of War Boss Green. Uh, and all we're going to do is just paint these the flat colour. Now they are going to pick up washes later on when we do some of the shades. Let's see if I can find somewhere to start painting. So it doesn't matter right now that these are going to be really bright. Just for the moment, we just want to get get some water in my paint for a start. I need to thin my paint. Uh, we just need to make sure they've got a base green colour. So that's all I'm focusing on right now. Okay, and with the greenery painted, looks a bit more like greenery now. These look like kind of space carrots or something, I don't know, space potatoes. Space potato! Uh, space wolves, do they eat space potatoes? Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to start the shading of all this stuff now. So the first thing we're going to do is shade the greens. And for that we're going to use a teeth, teeth, get my words out. Athonian camo shade. Yes. So give it a jolly good shake as always. I'm looking for my thing to stand it on so I don't spill it. Oh, I can't find it, never mind. I'll just have to risk spilling it. Ooh. And all we're going to do is put some shade on the plants. Just at this point, on the plants. We'll come back and do some more green a bit later on in some other parts. But for now, we're just going to put it on the plants. Get it in all the little recesses and make it look more interesting. Okay, so now that Athonian camo shade is dried, next it's time to make some more dirt. Now we want to make, we want to tie the, the rubble and stuff and the debris and the plants into the mud. So it's just mud and stuff right now, it doesn't look really very good. So we're going to do a little bit of tying in. For that we're just going to use the good old fashioned Agrax Earth Shade. Uh, and we're just going to be fairly liberal with this because we want to make everything look a little bit mucky. So let me, let me shade brush, let me get my shade, shade brush. I've got a shade brush anywhere, anywhere shade brush. Slightly bigger brush. That will do. Not quite the shade brush I was looking on. That's a bigger one. That is a bigger one. Yeah, that's a such dig. Right, so I've got a big fat brush for this one. So we're going to get some shade on the big fat brush. I'm just going to put it all over. I'm going to go over all the rocks and the plants as well because we want to make them all tie in. So I can be quite generous here as I hit the camera. Quite generous here, just get it over everything. I'm going to try and keep it from pooling up and making patches and things like that. I want to keep it reasonably, well, not as neat then, but neat's really not the word. But I don't want big watermarks and tide marks and stuff everywhere, so we'll just go reasonably carefully. Okay, so all the Agrax Earth Shade is now nicely dry. It took forever because I put tons on. So it's looking much more muddy now. Uh, and you see all the plants have darkened up quite nice and it's faded around the edges and the barrel looks all bingy. Yeah, I told you I wasn't too fussed about that Aquila not looking neat because it's covered in nonsense now. Yeah. Anyway, what's next? A few last things to do. We need basically need to do a bit of dry brushing on the greenery just to bring it back. Um, and that's kind of it then because then it's time for test snow yeah i'm looking forward to that bit right so i've got the war boss green again same as before war boss green made to make your things greener 
I'm going to get a tiny bit on the brush, and you guessed it, we are going to do the dry brushing. Yeah. So I'm just getting most of that off on the tissue. Oh. I went to get loads of it off on the tissue and put the brush through the big pile of paint in the middle of the tissue. Uh, hello. Right. So, quite gently, because these are quite delicate and floppy and bendy, we're just going to dry brush over these leaves, these little growing creatures. And we're not going for edges here, particularly. We're just aiming to brighten them back up again, to fade that wash, the agrax and the whatever the green one was, just to bring it back a bit. So we're going to work over them slowly, just to get the green back on the scene. Ooh, my poet, and I know it. So let's just get these going. Okay, and with that done, one last step, and that is to take a lighter green colour, Skarsnik Green. Give it a good shake, and you know what we're going to do. We're going to dry brush. Yay. Thing is, dry brushing is, if you get it right, it's such a brilliant way to easily do complicated things. Because you can spend a lot of time delicately painting, but if you can do a dry brush, the results can be fantastic, darling. Fabulous, darling, fabulous. So this I'm really just focusing on the ends of the leaves and the very crests of the ribbed bits. They look like trilobites. These are plants, they're creatures. And with that all done, I did a little bit of the gray over the stones just to bring them out a bit. That is done. That's all the painting I need to do on the base. So what's next? Next is the fun bit. I have two things. I have some PVA, or if you're one of our colonial cousins. Of course, Elmer's glue. And I also have some artificial snow. This is Woodland Scenic's Soft Flake Snow. Other snow products are available. Uh, and what I've done, I've got a little pot here, you see. Uh, and I have in that some of the Soft Flake Snow. Now I've not tried this before, but I've seen someone do it, so I'm gonna give it a go. I'm basically gonna put PVA in there and munge it up till it makes like a, 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 a it's hard to explain it. It's like a, it's almost like gum, it's like a, flumpy thing. Anyway, what I'm going to do is mix some of this. This is going to be the first stage. First stage is just to get some, some shape to the snow, to put some a blanket of snow, of thick snow down over this, and over which we'll then do some other snow later. So what I'm going to do, I don't know how much to mix. I'm going to do it by ear. I'm going to mix some of the PVA in now. One second, it's off camera. Let's do some. I don't know. I've done, I've done that much. That might be too much. I don't know. I don't know. I've never done this before. Right, where's my tissue? Handy tip, if you're using PVA glue, always take the excess splooge off the off the inside of the lid because all it does is gum up and then you have to fart about trying to get the lid open. Okay, that's that. Now I'm going to get a stirry stick of some sort. I have a spatulia and I'm going to stir. I'm a right stirrer and I'm going to knock the camera as well. And it just becomes this gooey mess. Yeah, look at that. Whoa. It looks like, it looks like meringue. Meringue. I'm gonna mix this in. And the hope is that this will make like the this will make like the piles of snow upon which we can put other snow later. Now I don't know whether I need to put more in or not. It, it needs to be with the glue so that it sticks to the base and sticks to itself and can be piled up. That might not be enough yet. I might need to put more in because that looks pretty pretty not particularly sticky. Just have a go, see if I can get some off and stick it on the side. What happens? Yeah, it's not particularly gluing up together to, to itself yet. So I'm going to go in and add some more and keep stirring this round till I get the consistency that I desire. Knocking the camera, making cakes. Right, I think we're done. In the end, I added about three amounts of the PVA you saw me put in. 
at the start. I did two more of those and I've got this kind of gloopy, gloopy mess now. And it makes the most wonderful noise. Let me put it in the microphone. Oh yeah, dead organic. Yeah, I'm knocking the camera again. Stop doing that. It's my visor of seeing gets in the way. Right, so this is the sad bit now. This is the sadness moment. Because what happens now, and I'll tell you what, it's such a strong PVA glue smell. It's like being at primary school again. Everybody's sticking bits of macaroni to pieces of cartridge paper. <laughs> so now is the moment of ultimate sadness when I must first put down some paper. Uh, some tissue I think will be fine. Ripping the tissue all over the place. Oh God, this kitchen roll we got lately is terrible. It just falls apart. It's horrible. Cheap tat. Not quality tat cheap tat now this is the moment of sadness because this is where we have to cover everything up now I'm going to try and cover up lots here and then fade it out here and this is like a track way so I'm going to fade it out a bit so begin with the sadness let's give this a try I've got no idea if or how this will work but we'll find out no doubt the idea is that the PVA is sticky but it keeps the granularity I hope that's on camera. Keeps the granularity of the powder, the snow powder. It doesn't work if your snow powder kind of dissolves. But this stuff isn't dissolving necessarily in the in the PVA. So the powder gives the PVA some structure and strength. So it doesn't just blob and flatten down. And the PVA gives the powder volume depth. <laughs> And the problem with this spatula is there's a pointy bit on the end and I'm stabbing myself in the hand. So I'll go and get all this put on. Now it looks like it's going to take me approximately a million years to do this. But I'm not in a rush because I also suspect this will take about six weeks to dry. It may take some time. I'm going to need another spatula to get the stuff off this spatula. So I'll come back when I've done this. This may prove frustrating. Okay, so that first layer of snow is on. It's had about 48 hours. It's still a little bit squishy, so there's still a little bit of moisture in there, but it's, it's good enough to go for the next step anyway. I might need to leave it a bit longer. It's gone crusty on the outside. It's just kind of slightly squishy, but you see it gives this kind of nice, not so much here where it's all smooth, but it gives this nice kind of like frozen snow effect, like when the snow's been thawed a little bit and it's kind of icy. I like that, I like that a lot. Right, so what's next? Before we do the actual floaty snow, we need to just do a bit more work on this mud here that's off camera. Uh, the Agrax Earthshade that I put over the whole thing, and I forgot to mention that, it did collect in the recesses, darkened it a bit. So I'm going to just put some more on to make it a little bit darker still. Now we're not going to do any dry brushing on there because mud is mud. You don't tend to get highlights on mud. It's just mud. So we're not going to do any highlights. We're going to go some Agrax Earthshade. And all we're going to do is kind of try not to get it on the snow, but go over it, but try and get it just in shot obviously here <laughs> mm. try and get it if we can just in the recesses a bit more than anywhere else just so it manages to catch and make some of those little those little marks i made that were sort of a bit like track marks but they're not quite just to help them stand out a bit more in fact we'll probably just go over the whole thing why not why not let it collect in the recesses and then when this is dried you can get onto the good fun stuff. Okay, so let's get this snow going. What we're going to be doing now is putting powdery snow over the top uh, and then not having it everywhere but fading it out a bit. So, what we're going to be using, we have our uh, soft flake snow from Woodland Scenics, we have a sieve, fine sieve with some taping, so I've got a little hole rather than everywhere. And we have just some bog standard hairspray. It doesn't matter what brand of hairspray you use, any hairspray. Uh, now, hairspray isn't going to be the complete thing for locking this in, but it's going to do a lot of good. So, let's get this on. Let's get it on. So, the first thing we need to do is basically simple. The way we do it, spray a load of this on for five or six seconds. This is basically an acrylic glue. It's like a lacquer glue, sorry, not an acrylic glue. It's like a it's like a sticky substance. It's a bit finer than spraying on PVA glue. 
spray this on everything it won't affect the paint finish that will be a little sticky surface give it a few seconds sprinkle some snow over let it dry and then repeat as many times as we need to we're only going to be building it up in thin layers we're not going to put it all on at once we want to build it up in thin layers because i want it to fade to this end so it's going to be spray sprinkle dry spray sprinkle dry and we'll go on and on now i'm this is going to stink the room out so what i'll do is i'll film one i'll get my air sucky thing going on so it's sucking all the fumes out and then when i've done the first one i have to go and do it somewhere else because i can't fill this whole room with room with hairspray smells it's just horrible smell so let me go and get the air extractor fan on and we'll do that now i'll have to do voiceover because again i'll have to wear my mask because it'll be a bit stinky so let's get on with it okay so let's get the snow snowing uh, now, as I explained a moment ago, the first thing we need to do is to put down a layer of something that the snow can stick to. Uh, that is where this hairspray comes in. And like I said a moment ago, don't spend money on hairspray. Buy the cheapest, nastiest tin of hairspray you can. Just cheap stuff. It doesn't matter. It all works. So we basically spray the hairspray on from above. Uh, and do this for between 5 to 10 seconds, depending on how much you want to put on there. I did this for about 6 or 7 seconds. You want a nice big thick coat. Now, it's not going to affect the, the paint on the model at all. It might add a very, very, very slight bit of glossiness to it, but you can combat that later with a matte coat, so it's fine. Next, I will go in with the snow. Uh, and you, as I say, I've covered up most of the sieve on this because it's a massive sieve. If I didn't do that, I'd, it'd just go and put snow everywhere. I want some control. And all you do is, while that hairspray is still wet, you have to be quick, just sprinkle it all over. Now it's important to remember, only the stuff that touches the hairspray and that, that kind of first thin layer will really stick, the rest will just come off. So as soon as you've done that, tap it and knock it and get all that excess off. And there we go, so you can see it's much less now. Looking pretty good, but a little bit of tweaking is required. I want to make the fade between the muddy area and the snow area more faded. So what I'm doing right now is hunting for a brush, hunting for a brush, knocking the camera, hunting for it, there we go, got the brush. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is while it's still wet and the, the snow isn't fully locked in, I'm just gonna brush some of the excess away uh, where I want the snow to be exposed. I've covered everything up, so I want to expose little bits of things. And yeah, I went to all the effort of painting that stuff. I want to show a bit of it. And the beauty is when you do this, because it's had a few seconds to stick, it doesn't easily come off, but it's not too hard. But you do get some little bits left and it just gives that kind of frosty look. So all I'll do now is do this. Now, what I will do from here on in is it took about three coats, if I remember rightly. This was yesterday when I did this. So the basic procedure is layer of hairspray, five or ten seconds, something like that. Uh, very quickly, go in. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to tell you here to leave this now for time, but I don't wear a watch. So, yeah, you have to leave it for a little while to dry. Anyway, yes, so you do your layer of hairspray. This is the second coat going on now. Layer of hairspray. I'm waffling and I'm only doing a voiceover. Layer of hairspray. As soon as that's on, sprinkle your snow, whatever that may be, all over the model. Uh, if you use a tiny sieve, you can control where it goes. In this case, I can cover all of it. Uh, as soon as that's gone on, tap all the excess off. If you need to, go in with a, an old brush, an old stiff bristle brush, just to rub away any excess that you don't want. Uh, and then either leave it for two or three minutes to fully cure, or you can actually just blast it with the hairdryer. I just gave it 30 seconds, no, 30 seconds, no, five, 10 seconds with a hairdryer just to harden off the varnish. Now that first coat of varnish and the first layer of snow won't be a massively tremendous grip if you knock it it'll still come off but what you do is you do this about three times so it's hairspray snow brush off the excess tap off the excess more hairspray then more snow then get rid of the excess then more hairspray then more snow and you can do as many layers as you want uh, if i had a really really small and very fine sieve i could build this up in even finer thinner layers but i've got what i've got so i've having to use that sieve from the kitchen don't tell me mum she doesn't know I use that. But yes, you can build it up. It may take you three, four, five, depending on the, how fine your snow powder is. Uh, it may take more layers. If it's pretty coarse, it may take a few less layers. But it's just hairspray, snow, hairspray, snow, hairspray, snow, hairspray, snow. And then when it was all finished, when I got it where I wanted it, it was fairly stable, but it wasn't really fully locked in. You could still dislodge it with your finger. So what I did at the end was then just gave it two really thick coats of Humbro 49 matte varnish from the rattle can just to finally lock it in. You can, if you want, spray 
PVA thin with water over it that will really lock it in but I decided not to do that because it was looking exactly as I wanted and I didn't want to risk making it all go lumpy and bumpy. And that's how I do snow. And not the camera. And with that snow now done and a few other bits that I'll talk about in a moment, the base is complete. Now what I didn't show in the video was after I'd done all the snow, to make sure everything was locked in place, the, the hairspray was keeping it reasonably locked in place, but it wasn't, there were still some fluffy bits that were a bit loose. So what I did was I basically went over it with a couple of really heavy coats of Humbrol Matte 49 matte acrylic varnish from the rattle can. Just gave it a big blast of the Humbrol Matte 49, let that dry for 10 minutes, gave it another blast. Uh, and that just locked everything in. If, if you were to dig into it with your fingernail, you probably would pull it out. It's only matte varnish and hairspray holding it in place but it'll be fine for once it's there and it's on your shelf and done so you know don't start throwing it around but it's not going anywhere um so yes i gave it a couple of coats of the matte varnish one little pleasing side effect of the hairspray is it did make the mud i don't know if it'll come out on camera but it did make the mud ever so slightly glossy a little bit and the matte varnish has toned it down a bit so it has that kind of wet mud look now i was debating whether to go with some gloss varnish just to make it look even more slick uh, and I decided not to. I want it, it's about where I want it. It's got that kind of wet but not soaking wet. It's more like cold, icy wet. I was going to maybe put some puddles in with some matte varnish, but there's no real recesses I can do that in, so I didn't do that in the end. So, yeah, snow is done. I'm really pleased with how that came out. I think it looks brilliant. Now, there are other snow products out there. Uh, next time I do snow, I'm going to see if I can get some of the, uh, what's it called? Precision Ice and Snow. Uh, they make a product that's uh, supposedly even finer than this and looks even more realistic. So I might get some of that next time. But I had to use the, the wood and scenic stuff I had because it's what I had. And it looks pretty good. I'm quite pleased with it. Now you will note there's a couple of other things I've done. Once this had been uh, all dried off and everything was sealed in, I went over the, uh, the, the join between the snow and the mud here with a bit more Agrax Earth Shade. You saw me catch it a little bit when I put the Agrax on. I went over the edge again a bit more with a big brush just to get that sort of brown mucky snow if you look at the side of a road or a dirt track and the snow down you get nice white snow and you get the muddy track and you get this kind of slushy munged up mud and snow in the middle so i just put a bit of bad grex earth shade on there and it came out quite nice uh, i also before i glued these down i put some of the original when i did the the paste with the snow and the pva glue i put some of that on the tires of the bike so that's on the front and the back all nicely munged in into the tires and uh, then I basically added the figures. Now these are dead simply done. These were mounted on cocktail sticks, if you remember, and then mounted onto corks so I could paint them. Uh, the cocktail sticks were, I drilled a hole in the bottom of the foot and in the bottom of the wheel and just PVA glued the stick into the bottom. All I did was take them out of the cork, I put them into the holes in the bottom of the stand, which is why I had the holes drilled about the right size for a cocktail stick. Uh, put loads of PVA glue down here, so it glued them into place, if you can see that on camera. Uh, let that cure for a little while when it was dry enough what i did was just got some cutters and snipped snipped off the excess of the cocktail sticks are just a little bit showing and then covered that in ca glue once the pva are dry just to lock it in even more i also got some watered down pva i put a little bit of pva under his right foot here and some watered down pva to go around the foot where this because the sticks in that foot so watered down pva just to run into underneath his foot and into the snow uh, and whilst that was still wet on both feet, I sprinkled some of the snow powder over, let it dry, and now you've got his foot. He's buried in snow, but it's also kind of covered with PVA, so it's not going anywhere. Same with the motorbike. I jammed some PVA under the wheel here and under the wheel at the back. And while it was still wet, just put, I put some powdered snow on it, and that just then covered up the PVA and made it look like snow. Now, it does look, give the impression that the wheel's a little bit off the ground, but it's it let's pretend he's in motion and he's just about riding over a pebble or something you know it doesn't really matter it's not that important uh, on the motorbike the wheel at the back has the stick in it so i was debating whether to do like little clips or metal pins and things like that and i thought look i've already got a stick in the wheel and the foot anyway why don't i just put them through snip them down so they fit and glue them in place so all the snow is on the figures are on uh, yes if you was to stop you wouldn't want to use this in a game because it's all PVA glue and hairspray and matte varnish holding everything on. If you were to start using this in the game, eventually everything would fall off, the snow would get knocked off. You could probably prod this out with your finger if you wanted to. But for just having it on your display shelf, it's not going to fall apart. These figures are fairly sturdy. They're not going to come off. The, the, the biker isn't attached to the bike, but the bike's not going anywhere. So that is done. So 
I'm really pleased with that. I'm really quite proud of that. It's the first snowscape I've ever... Well, I tell a lie. I did do one snowscape when I was 13, and that was literally a block of foam and some baking powder. Yeah, that was it. Baking powder sprinkled all over it and a, a plane in, as if it had crashed. And it wasn't glued in place. Well, I covered it in PVA and sprinkled the baking powder on then put it on my shelf in my bedroom. So it was basically a big flat piece of something covered in baking powder that you can imagine what happened. Every time somebody opened the door, it went everywhere. Yeah, I was only 13, what was I doing? So this is really the first proper snowscape I've ever done. I'm quite pleased. Like I say, next time I'm gonna try the, uh, the the other stuff, the other powder. I keep forgetting what they're called, what they're called? Precision Ice and Snow. I keep forgetting what they're called. Precision Ice and Snow, we'll give that a try next time we do a snowscape, because uh, it's supposed to be much finer. So therefore the hairspray may have a better hope of holding onto it. But that's gonna do, so what I need to do is there's nothing else to do on this now uh i you notice by the way i did mask off or mask off again the clear stand when i was doing the flumpy snow and the powdery snow i did the flumpy snow and took all the masking off and then realized i've got to do the powdery snow so i put some masking back on again and some mask all down the very bottom here just so it went between the flumpy snow and the clear plastic so that when i finished all this stuff and done all the matte varnish and everything else i just pulled the masking off the masking fluid came with it it was humbrol mask all and voila, we have the nice base. There was a bit of uh, snow and PVA glue and stuff around the bottom. Again, like I did with the CA glue, just damped a cotton bud in some uh, isopropyl alcohol and just cleaned it all off. So I've learned in this build, if you do get fogging on your clear parts from CA glue, just use isopropyl alcohol and, and your cotton bud. and it, it works fine. It seems to work better with cotton buds that have the paper sticks, not ones with the plastic sticks. I don't know why, it, it just does. Right, so I will go and get the spinny thing ready and then I think we're done. So, I'm back in a moment. And there it is, yes, project complete, build complete. I am so super happy with how this has come out. I can't tell you how, how really overjoyed I am. Now I know in like a year or two's time I'll look back on this and be like, wow, that's terrible, I can do much better. But... I've learned a lot in the process of this build. I'm still learning how to brush paint. I've only done a few builds now with brush painting and I've only really started doing brush painting again. Uh, you know, the last time I did proper brush painting, I was like 13 and I was using Tamiya paint, so I was complete gash, but I'm still learning. Uh, I'm taking, you know, I'm taking the, the games workshop method, the heavy metal method with your edge highlighting and your, your color recommendations and stuff. And I'm kind of hybridizing it to add in my own knowledge of colors and weathering and things like that. So it's kind of a hybrid between the GW style and the more traditional model making style. And I think that's the way I'll go forward. There may be the odd occasional bill where, you know, I don't use any GW methods at all. Uh, but there may be methods where I lean more on the GW method, but I'm not going to do things like, you know, get all the base colours down and then do lots of edge highlighting because edge highlighting, it doesn't really work when you then cover it up with realistic chipping and weathering. It just, it looks a bit, looks a bit weird. So I'll, it'll always be a hybrid for me. I don't, I don't think I'll ever just go the full GW method. Um, unless I'm like making something quickly for someone, if somebody you know wants me to build them a, an army or something, I don't think I'll be doing too much realism at that point, unless they want to pay through the nose. But that's going to do it. I think we are we are done. I'm not going to uh, extol the virtues of the kit again because we did that in the in the episode where we had the the, the flyer just on its own on the spinny thing. Um, yes, it is a brilliant kit. The figures are brilliant to paint. Everything. The bike was just complete ass. Don't go and get the bike. It's horrible. It's a hundred years old. It's badly molded. It's got. It's not pleasant. Everything's soft and squishy. Don't don't bother with the bike. But um, yeah, I, I really had fun, and I, I can't recommend these Games Workshop Warhammer things enough. Uh, they're just a joy to paint. And if you're looking to learn brush painting, you could. This is probably one of the best things to try learning on something from GW, something from Warhammer or Warhammer 30k. If more your fantasy is more your thing, just because you've got beautifully sculpted models, you've got the 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 color app for your app for your mobile device, which can take some of the thinking away, so you can just not have to worry about what colors to use. Just use theirs, and it's a good place to learn. Uh, and it, it's just they're made to be brush painted so if you're learning to brush paint go and get yourself a warhammer kit either a little pack of figures or a little cheapy tank or something just just have fun with it you won't have to worry about the build because they just work and you won't have to worry about figuring out color theory because they do that for you and you can worry about that later so but we've said all that in the last episode anyway but that is going to do us that's all uh, there is on this build uh this is now going up for sale it will be shortly so keep an eye on modelmakingguru.com 
Uh, I'll put it on the website in the for sale page. So it's modelmakingguru.com forward slash something or other. I'll put the link here so you can see it. That's where I put all my for sale models. This will go up for sale. It won't be cheap. Um, it's over 100 hours into this. So yeah, don't expect don't expect cheap. This is going to be not uh, a cheap build to buy. Uh, whether you want to play this in a game, <laughs> given what you're going to pay for it, maybe you might do i mean this is aimed more at the person that wants to have it as a display model uh, as a display model it'll look brilliant in your cabinet it's just you know it'll command a position uh it's nice and big and it's got some elevation so yeah but if, if you want to play it it is the 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 storm wolf is removable from the diorama oh, i can't get my words out words words talking talking Yes, the flyer is removable from the base, so you can pop this off the diorama and put it on a traditional standard GW flyer base if you want to use it in a game. Um, it'll certainly look better than everybody else's model on the table, and you'll be the toast of the town. I also don't really know, if you played this in a game with this base, would you have to take the two figures into account? I don't know, for your points and for stuff like that, or would you just say pretend they're not there? I don't know. Uh, but the last thing is, of course, Yes, everything's glued down, but if you're using this in a game, I can't guarantee all the snow won't fall off eventually with handling and dropping and breaking. So, yeah, maybe take it off this diorama and put it on a standard flyer base if you're going to play it. But keep an eye out on the Model Making Guru website, uh, and it'll go up for sale on there. And I'll ship it anywhere. I don't care where you are. So... Uh, it just remains for me to say thank you so much for watching this build series. I've had a blast. I hope you've had a blast. I hope you've learned some things. Next up, I need to finish off the big mega size Unicorn Gundam. I need to get that done. Uh, um, so that's probably one more episode of that. Uh, and I'll start filming that later on today. And then once that is done, uh, we're on to the E-Models build of the little armoured car that I'm going to Warhammer up. I was going to do it with some Space Marines. But I'm thinking now I might not. I might do it with some Imperial Guard, Astra Militarum, whatever you want to call them. It seems like a better fit. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, as always, don't forget to pop along to the Model Makers Boom Hut address down there on the right. Uh, it's the best internet group for model making. We're dead friendly. Everybody's really supportive and helpful. There's no negativity, no snark, no bitching. We don't allow it. So go and join three, almost three and a half thousand other people in the best online model making group and last of all as always uh, you can if you wish to support me on patreon the address down there patreon.com forward slash model making guru uh, support me with anything from a dollar onwards as much as you want uh, you don't have to it is optional but it will be absolutely fantastic if you can it helps keep this channel going helps keep me going keeps me in kits and keeps me in stuff to film for you and it's just brilliant uh, but that's going to do us so thank you so much for watching do take care of yourselves stand by for the finale of the unicorn and gundam uh, and then the armored thing and then who knows what after that i've got an imperial knight to do yet yeah, there might be a glut of Warhammer before we get back to Gumpla. Sorry, Gumpla fans. Think of the Imperial Knight like a Gumpla. <sighs> anyway, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios me. I'm waving my hand and you can't see me waving my hand. It's a voiceover, you moron. <sighs> adios amoebas. Adios amoebas.